Is that also gout? Gout is also uh, caused from uric acid crystals. It's generally in your toes and in your feet because just by virtue of gravity, they go down the body and they don't circulate back up through the system very well. And when they go down, they settle in your toes. And that's why people get gouty joints or these penetrate the cartilage in the toes. The cartilage has an inflammation response. And with the inflammation response, you have pain. We'll let you kind of scroll through that and see what other interesting features you might find. Right here, and again, it's probably hard to pick up with the camera, but there's a little circle, and that little circle is the result of refined carbohydrates in the diet. Most people across the world eat lots of things made of sugar or flour. Even starchy items such as white rice and potatoes uh, are high in their refined carbohydrate values and high on the glycemic index. If it has not been digested properly, including bread, pasta, pancakes, waffles, tortillas, bagels, muffins, and biscuits, all of those things, including pie, cake, ice cream, cookies, and pop, and candy, can end up fermenting in the system, and in the fermentation process, they turn into what's called yeast buds, and by true medical definition, an overgrowth of yeast in the system is called candida or candidiasis. And it is a food source for bacteria or virus to live in the system. And the less candida we have, the less potential of bacteria buildup we have in, in there. And again, if the camera's picking it up, I'm focusing in and out because there's a little dance of, ref of uh, friendly flora or friendly bacteria in the membrane of that yeast bud trying to catabolize it and the term in science catabolism simply means it's trying to eat it up and get rid of it and unfortunately when people undergo bouts of antibiotics it kills off the bad bacteria which is a good thing but unfortunately it also kills off the good bacteria in the system and without good bacteria to eat away or catabolize the yeast then yeast is going to proliferate through the system and you're going to get more of it. Let's see. Going back to para oh, here I'll let you go ahead and explain it's that. Another first. beautiful parasitized red blood cell. All red blood cells should be perfectly round, separated, and perfectly the same size. Obviously that has a very strange size to it, but the parasite in the membrane of that red blood cell has caused it to almost look like a free radically damaged red blood cell and this is a nice place to pause because the red blood cell right next to it is free radical damage. This one is due to a parasite, this one is due to toxins, chemicals, or pollution. Now that motion that we're seeing on that uh, elongated one on the top, is that the actual parasite moving inside the cell? It's the, the parasite cell? inside the membrane of the red blood cell that causes that motion. We might find another one here if we look around. There's a parasite that's in the membrane of this red blood cell. This is an interesting picture here because there's a white blood cell, very functional, very active, and you can see the granules inside the membranes of the red blood cells. In science, those granules are called lysosomes, and lysosomes will again move by virtue of motion coming out of the lymphatics. If a person's moving their body, lymphatics will secrete and lymphatics will effectuate activity in the membrane of a white blood cell. This circle down here and this circle here, right before your eyes, you're seeing how the white blood cell is macrophaging or trying to eat up, if you would, the yeast buds that are in the plasma. And those yeast buds uh, are things that are considered foreign bodies to the to a, a person's physiology and therefore the white blood cell considers them foreign and it's trying to get rid of them right now even though this is in vitro it's not in a person's body anymore but nonetheless the white blood cell cell is still working trying to get rid of those uh, yeast buds. Going back to parasites and in, in your experience with the tens of thousands of blood samples that you've looked at what percentage of the population has 
parasites within the blood cells. Probably some of the biggest offenders of uh, parasites are people that have their pets sleep on their pillows with them. We love our pets like we love our children, but nonetheless, it's probably not a good habit to have pets sleeping on beds with us. Whenever we have our pets in the home and we're petting them with our hands and then we don't wash our hands and we get them near our face, we have a tendency to have those our hands penetrate the skin uh, when our hands are getting near our faces. And uh, it is not unusual to see parasites in the membranes of red blood cells. In my work, I like to see none, and I think there should be none. There are many different natural types of antibiotics in the natural food industry that can actually kill parasites besides just your own immune system doing it. But um, I don't know that I've ever established a percentage, but there are a good deal of people that will show a few parasites. It is a serious condition on a screen like I have here when I see one on this page and I go to the next page and there would be another one and another one and another one. They get so numerous that the ratio of them start to take over the red blood cells. And again, looking at this right here, this would be a parasite that is uh, actually destroying the membrane of that red blood cell. As I go from page to page, I'm seeing some of the free radical damage, not to be confused with parasites and not to be confused uh, that it's not caused by the same thing. And by the way, I mentioned some of the white blood cells a while ago that were moving. These white blood cells that look like this are in a different classification altogether. They are white blood cells, but they're called lymphocytes. And that particular one is called a T lymphocyte, which is responsible to fight virus. And they've also found those to be the cancer fighters also. T cells won't move on my slide because they're agranular or without uh, granules in them. And T cells have to be pumped by the heart in order to get them through the system. Unlike the granulocytes, which only live for all oh, 9 to 15 hours in a person's body, a T cell can actually live up to several months. And they feel that they've even lived up to a year or so when they hide out in the bone marrow. This is not a T cell here. This is a granulocyte again, and specifically it's called a neutrophil. And neutrophils only live seen for this time. yet. It's called an eosinophil. And an eosinophil is quite dynamic because they have much larger granules. They have two distinct nuclei in them, and it should be about two times the size of a red blood cell. An eosinophil is a white blood cell that is, I always call it a reconnaissance unit, because all they do is find foreign bodies, antigens, and especially allergens. People that have allergies will have high numbers of eosinophils in their system. That they can pick out in a lab test and actually count them. But an eosinophil is uh, very dynamic looking because of the large granules. And again, like the other granulocytes called neutrophils, the granules should be moving about and um, uh, moving among each other if the lymph nodes in the body are secreting cells that I've actually mashed between the cover slide and the microscope slide itself. By mashing them down, I can pop the red blood cells and anything that were in the red blood cells will come out. The parasites that were in some of them are apparent now where I mashed them and right here there's a almost looks like a little worm or a little snake and some of them are sticking out. Uh, they call these medusa heads. These red blood cells are kind of in their last uh, little bit of life at this point. But you can see all the little parasites hanging out of the red blood cells. It looks a little distasteful, but nonetheless, that's what hides out in many people's red blood cells that we try to get killed off.